Hello everyone. In this video today, I will show you how you can secure UCM and what security settings you can implement to prevent the UCM from being penetrated. The first thing that I would like to emphasize is never ever place your UCM directly on the public network because that will pose serious concerns, uh, security concerns. I'm talking about security concerns. And I always recommend installers to put the UCM behind a firewall and then configure your access control list to allow only uh, explicitly valid sources, of course, to the UCM, like your uh, ITSP IP address or the IP addresses of your remote uh, extensions. So doing so will prevent uh, unauthorized users from sending malicious SIP messages to the UCM. And what I mean by that, never go to network settings and then under the network settings include the public IP address. Always use put the UCM in a private network and then configure port forwarding. Like for this example, we have the, uh, the UCM in the private network behind uh, firewall. <coughs> uh, for this case, the firewall has a public IP 96.25.96.23. So if you would like to make the UCM reachable on the public network, you can configure it this way. The first thing, create a port forwarding on the router. Tell the router uh, anytime there is traffic coming on port 5060, which is the default port for SIP traffic, send it to the UCM. And then create an ECL or an access control list to block all traffic on port 5060, except the legitimate IP addresses like uh, your ITSP IP address or in case you have remote uh, extensions with uh, static public IP address. Then after you do that, you need to go to the UCM and configure the NAT settings. So the NAT settings are available under the SIP settings. Then go to NAT settings and then enter the public IP address in here, which is 25.96.23 and save, then you choose, uh, you can create your local area network and then include, for example, I'm using 10.1.0, save, and you can add multiple networks behind the same, uh, the same uh, firewall in case you're using VLANs. <coughs> so every time there is any device from any uh, IP address from the local network, the UCM is gonna communicate this public IP address in the SIP message. This is very useful in case you have issues with one-way audio. It could be related to that setting. Uh, probably it's not well configured. And also to add an extra level of security to your UCM, uh, I strongly uh, recommend to change uh, the default support 5060, which is this one. This one, the first thing uh, when you want to change the default SIP port on the UCM, you have to do it at two levels. The first one is the general. So this is the port that internal phones uses to register to the UCM. By default, it's 5060. You can change it, for example, uh, to 5080. And then go back here and change that one also to 5080. So in case you have remote, uh, remote extensions that are registered to the UCM, they will use 5080 also to register to the UCM. Uh, for that case, when you change the port, if you if you have the phones and the extensions provisioned with zero config, it's okay. You just go to the phone, reboot the phone, then the UCM will communicate the new port. If you have remote phones, or if you have, for example, a phone that is uh, configured manually, so you're just going to have to add the new port to the IP address of the UCM in the account settings. So for example, I have 2160. Let's say this is the IP address of my UCM. Then I change the port to 5080. So I'm just gonna include uh, colon 5080 so that the phone can reach the UCM on the right port. <clears throat> so now that we talked about how to secure the UCM from being reached or accessed by unauthorized users, there are still several basic security steps that you can uh, take to make your UCM even more secure. 
And the first thing that we're going to start with is securing your extensions. Let's say I have extension 1000. And it has the SIP password. This is the default. Uh, first, securing your extensions with a strong SIP password provides authentication and validation that only legitimate sources that knows the password can register. That is why you should never use easy to guess uh, SIP passwords for your extensions. Otherwise, the chance that your password can be guessed or cracked out through a SIP registration attack get higher. So always include complex and long uh, passwords. There's also another setting that can protect your extensions from SIP registration attack, which is the strategy option. Uh, this allows to restrict registration to uh, the extension to either, you can either tell it to specify the IP address in case SIP endpoint that is using extension 1000 has, uh, for example, static IP address, you can just include it right there. Or you can, for example, restrict it to a network. Let's say my network address is 192.168.22.0. So I'm just going to tell uh, the UCM any uh, SIP registration attempt that comes from an IP within this subnet, allow it. This one is useful <clears throat> in the sense that if the SIP passwords get cracked, unauthorized users will not be able to register to the extension if their source IP address does not match the specified IP address or the subnet that you have configured in there. So now that we talked about extensions, let's move on to the uh, call routing, and we're going to talk about the outbound route. Uh, the principle of least privilege is always recommended when configuring call routing on the UCM. Users should only be assigned the privilege level required to make specific calls through specific outbound routes. For example, if only few users need to make international calls, let's say I only want this extension 1000 to be able to make international call. I can only assign this extension and only this extension, give it the privilege level of international. Then go to the outbound route. For example, this is for international. So I'm just going to give it international. That means only extension 1000 will be able to make international calls from that specific uh, outbound route. Uh, there's also the option to enable uh, uh, filter or source caller ID, where you can specify the pattern. Then you can choose the extension under the selected area. And that means only extension 1000 will be able to call from this outbound uh, route. One thing about this feature right here, enable filter on source caller ID, when you have that one used at the outbound route, make sure that the extension is not configured with a caller ID number. For example, if you include, this is your caller ID number, and the inbound route, at the outbound route, I'm sorry, you have the enable filter on source caller ID for extension 235, it's not going to work because when this extension calls the UCM, it's going to send this caller ID, and it doesn't match the 235 that the UCM has in the future uh, enable filter on source caller ID. So every time you want to use enable filter on source caller ID, make sure this one is blank. Next, we're going to move on to the IVR, because the IVR also can expose some uh, security risks. So when creating my VR, you should decide whether to allow the calls uh, entering the IVR to make outbound calls through trunks by configuring that feature dial trunk. Uh, and also set the permission to national, international. So if dial trunk options enabled 
the user calling into the IVR will be able to dial external num numbers through a trunk if the IVR's permission is higher than or equal to the privilege of the trunk. The potential risk uh, here is that unwanted users may call into the IVR and then dial external numbers like international numbers which might cause unexpected uh, high charges. So my recommendation is the following. If dialing the trunk from the IVR is required by the client, ensure that the outbound route has an explicit dial pattern that allows dialing only predefined external number. And what I mean by this, let's say you have press one and then press one gives you the option to dial external number 617566930, which is the, the, tec the technical support for number for Grand Stream. So if you want only this phone to be dialed out from the outbound route from the IVR, you can specify, for example, that one, give it extension uh, local, for example, save and apply, and then go to uh, the outbound route and then create an outbound route and actually include that number 617-56-300 and call it IVR, then set the level to local. And then you can choose your own trunk if it's a SIP trunk or analog trunk. This way, this outbound route will only allow this number and no other number to be dialed from the IVR. There's also the option, so where, for example, sometimes you want to call into the IVR, then you want to dial the numbers that you want. So, uh, like for example, here we have it specified, but usually you don't know which number you would like to call from the IVR. So in case that's an option that you want to give your users to call into the IVR, then from the IVR to dial other numbers, you can actually set an outbound route for like local numbers. So we're just going to use, for example, uh, 10 digits or 11 digits. Then you can use a password or pin group number. If it's a password, that means all the users are going to use the same password. Or you can use the PIN number in case you have more than one user. And every time someone makes a call from this outbound route and you want to know which person makes a call from this outbound route, you can configure the PIN number uh, group. And the PIN group can be configured. It's under internal options. Just create a PIN group. For example, call it, this is IT people. Uh, record in CDR so that you can see how make the call. Then you can start adding your PIN number. Uh, let's say uh, this is a PIN number for Steve. Add. So every time Steve calls into the IVR and then he tries to make outbound calls from the IVR, he's going to be requested to enter the PIN number. And the PIN number for Steve is going to be 21, I'm sorry, 2017. And then you will be able to see it in the CDR. So this is uh, part one of this video. So I'm just going to stop this video and then have another video as a part two. You can watch part two uh, for the same video to continue the other security settings that you can uh, enable on the UCM to make your, your UCM uh, more secure.